Let's build out this cool AI-driven story generator using just five HTMX directives and zero custom JavaScript on the client. So what is HTMX? Well, HTMX is a 34K JavaScript library. You add it to your page, and then you can go and add custom attributes to your HTML elements. So you can say, for example, post this form to this endpoint, take the HTML that comes back and put it over in this div, and it makes it very easy. You have to write exactly zero JavaScript. In fact, I'm going to show you the exact same application written in Next.js, so you can do some comparisons. You'll see that its 70 lines of React are replaced by just those five HTMX directives and Astro. But of course, I'm still a big Next.js and React fan. I'm in the midst of writing a course on it right now. You can go and check out my progress on that, as well as get Next.js tips and tricks over at pronextjs.dev. But in the meantime, let's try out HTMX and use it to build an AI-driven UI. Let's get right into it. Now, in order to use HTMX, you need an HTTP server that's returning HTML. In this case, we're going to use Astro. We could use Go or Python or whatever you want. PHP, let's use Astro. We'll call it HTMX AI. We'll start with an empty project. All right, looks like we're good to go. Let's bring up VS Code. Let's bring it up and see what we've got. All right, clear enough. Now we're going to bring in Tailwind to make it easy to make this thing look good. Now it's pretty easy. Let's go over to our home page. Let's change out the title, make it Astro HMX AI, and then we'll place the body with the form. That form tag is going to include an input as well as a button to do the submit. Then down below that, we're going to have a result div where we're going to go take the output of the server and put it into that result div. All right, looking pretty good. Now we want to try out HTMX. So the next thing we want to do is bring in the HTMX library into our project. I'm just going to go copy it into our public folder. So this is just a copy of the HTMX library. And to bring that onto our page, all we need to do is bring in a script tag. The is in line is an Astro thing telling Astro to not actually try and bundle that script. All right, so here's how this is going to work. This form tag, when you hit submit, is going to do an Ajax post to the slash prompt endpoint. And that's going to return HTML. And we're going to take that HTML and we're going to put it into the resultive down below. So we're going to use one HTMX tag, the HX post directive, to tell HTMX that instead of doing any usual form post, we want to use an Ajax form post, and we want to send it to slash prompt. And then we're going to give it HX target, and that will tell it where to go and take the output of slash prompt and put it into our page. So of course, we need slash prompt. So let's go over and create that in a pages directory. So in the dot astro, we're going to go get that prompt that comes out of the form. You can see that the input has the name of prompt. That comes over here, gets mapped to prompt. And then we're just going to go and put it in italics and return it. Let's hit save and give it a try. All right, so we're getting this form data cannot be parsed error. That's because Astro is right now running in static mode. What we want to do is instead turn it into a, an SSR server so that it actually handles each request dynamically. That's actually kind of what HTMX is used to dealing with because it needs to do things like send form data and get values back dynamically. So let's go and turn our Astro server into an actual server. To do that, we go into our Astro config and say that we want the output to be a server. We then rerun. And now that works just fine. All right, so this is where it really starts to get fun. So what we're going to do is prompt is actually going to repeat onto itself. So what's going to happen is the initial page is going to post to slash prompt. And then slash prompt is going to return some HTML that in turn has some HTMX directives on it. Those HTMX directives are going to tell the page to re-request prompt after 50 milliseconds. So let's start off with that. So we're going to start off with HX get. That's going to tell HTMX to do a get to slash prompt where we did a post. We're going to use the two to differentiate. Post is going to start our request, and then get is going to go and cycle around on our request. HX target is like we had before. We're just going to target ourselves, the result. And then we're going to use a trigger to automatically do that after 50 milliseconds. So let's try, give it a try. All right, so what happens is we get one response back. And then because we're not posting, we don't have form data. So we need to go and check if we have a post. So first, we'll check over our post. And then for prompt, we'll just start with an empty string. And if we have a prompt, then we'll use it. Let's try it again. All right, cool. Looks like we are refreshing every 50 milliseconds. 
All right, so now this is going to go on literally forever. It will not stop. What we want to do is we want to have a way to manage requests. We want to start a request when you do a post, and we have to have a way to get the status of that request continuously as we call back onto ourselves. So we're going to create a request library. Let's go give it a try. So in source, I'll create a file called request.ts, and we'll start off with a map of requests. Given a request ID, a string, we're going to have a completion, which would be the string that we're building, and then whether or not we're done. And so whether or not we're done is going to tell us whether we actually want to stop the process. So, so that's what we're going to have in the memory of the server. Then we have a function called get request that given a request ID will just give us back that request. All right, now we create the start request function. That's what's called when you do slash prompt and you give it the prompt. We call start request with the prompt like dog. And then we create a request ID. Then we create an entry into that request lookup that has the request ID and has the completion and as well as the pending. Pending is currently true because we are pending on the result. And then we return the request ID. Now we got to actually go and do something with it. So let's create a little timer that just adds the prompt onto itself a bunch of times and finally finishes when it's created a string that's big enough. So to do that, we create an interval where we go and add on every 100 milliseconds the prompt to a completion string that has a bunch of prompts already added onto it. And then after we hit 100 characters, we say that we're done. Pending is false, and we clear that interval. So we'll start by bringing in get request and start request. Now we're not going to use the prompt down here anymore, so let's change that to request ID. And now in the post, we want to do that start of the request. So now if we don't have a post, we need to get the request ID somehow. So let's go and add that on to the get. And then we can say up here, if we didn't get a post, then we'll get the request ID from the search params because we just added it to the HX get. And then finally, we have a request ID. So let's go and get the current value of that request. And now down in here, let's just use the completion string that we got back. And finally, we don't want to always go and do that load of 50 milliseconds. We only want to do that when we are still pending. So go and put a little conditional logic into the trigger. So if we're still pending, then we want to do the load delay. Otherwise, just no trigger. Let's hit save and go. All right, looking good. Dog, 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 dog. And we're done. Awesome. Okay. So this is basically how we're going to stream the OpenAI request. So now we need to go and replace our little interval with a request to OpenAI, and we'll be done. All right, so now I'm going to go and bring in an OpenAI file that connects to OpenAI. Of course, all this code is available to you for free on GitHub. The OpenAI file includes this complete with chat GPT. So it gets, takes a prompt, in this case, a funny story about a dog. And then it has a couple of different things. It has a token callback that says, hey, when we get stuff back from chat GPT, go and call me back with a piece of text that has a completed string in it. And then when it finally ends, we get an end callback. And we get some options if you want to add some options. What we're really doing is making an HTTPS request to openai.com. So you need an OpenAI key that needs to be in your environment. Body that we're going to send to that OpenAI endpoint. It's going to use the GPT 3.5 Turbo model. It's going to get a bunch of tokens. It's going to have a prompt in it. And it's going to say, most importantly, stream is true. And so it's going to send back to us a bunch of data packets. So that's going to come in on this result callbacks. So we're going to have data going to have a bunch of chunks in it. They're going to start with data. We're going to then go and get out the choice from that data. And then finally, when it's all over, we get an end. And that means the stream is ended and we get the end callback. All right, let's go integrate this into our request module. To do that, we can bring in our complete with chat GPT from our OpenAI module. And then down here, where we had our interval, we simply replace that with a call to complete with chat GPT. We give it our prompt. We give it our text callback so that we set the completion every time we get a new text block back and then when we're pending. And then when we end, we set the pending to false. Hit save. Let's give it a try. There you go. All right, now there is one more thing about the Astro implementation that I wanted to get into, and that's that when you call slash prompt, you're getting more than you need on the response. So if we look at network and I refresh and then hit submit, we see we get a lot of prompts here. And then the response has a lot of tailwind, as well as the script tags for the page. And we just don't really need any of that. So what we can do is use middleware to strip that out. So just for prompt, 
we're going to go and strip out styles and script tags. So let's get rid of that. All right, so in the source directory, I'm going to go create a new file called middleware.ts. And into there, I'll bring our middleware implementation. It's got some documentation up at the top. And then what we do is we take every request that we get, we run it, and then we see, are we on like the slash prompt route? And if we are, then we take what we got back from the output and we just cleave off any style or script tags using regex. And that's about it. So that cleans the response going out. All right, let's try it again. Let's go over to our network. And now we see that we get really clean responses coming out of that HTMX endpoint. Now, they're probably going to add at some point fragment support to Astro to make this a lot easier. In things like PHP, of course, that wouldn't be a problem. Of course, you do want to sanitize the output if your templating system, like PHP, for example, doesn't sanitize automatically. Turns out Astro does sanitize automatically, so there's not any kind of security issue when it comes to having XSS go from the user prompt out to OpenAI and then come back. All right, I mentioned that I created a Next.js variant of this. Of course, that is available to you on GitHub for free, so you can take a look and try it out for yourself. The important parts are around the page route. We have exactly the same HTML, essentially, but we don't have those HTMX attributes. And then on submit, we call the API GPT endpoint, which we created over here in our API route that starts the request. And then there is an API GPT request ID route that goes and gets the current output of ChatGPT for that request. So back into our page, we use an interval that we write in JavaScript to go and take that request ID and then go and get the output from it, see if it's completed, and finally put the result into the result completion tag, which is then put into the result tag. So the React version is a lot more imperative we're telling the client what to do, as opposed to declarative on the HTMX side, we're basically telling HTMX, hey, this is what I want these tags to do, and it handles all the infrastructure of doing the posts and the triggers and all the rest. All right, so certainly you can see why people are so excited about HTMX. You can do some really cool things with very little or no JavaScript on the page besides HTMX. You can just use those awesome declarative attributes on each HTML element. But there are some concerns, so one of which is security. If you are on a server, like a PHP server, that does not do sanitization, you're going to want to make sure that the data that you send back to HTMX is sanitized before you send it out. You don't have to handle that in React because React, unless you do dangerously set inner HTML, isn't going to do use the HTML raw that it gets back. So yes, HTMX is essentially vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks if you don't do the sanitization yourself because it's not going to do it for you. Another question that I've heard a lot about HTMX is, as a React developer, should I learn it? And I think you should. I think it's good to know different models of creating web applications. The imperative model, which we see with Vue and Svelte and Solid and Quick and React, is one way of doing web applications. This is a dramatically different way of doing web applications. And in some cases, I think it's perfectly fine, certainly for applications low end and actually even cool stuff like this, which I think is kind of where you might expect a React app to play. I think HTMX does quite well with these sort of applications. So I think it's definitely worth your time to learn. Of course, if you're an HTMX fan, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you have questions about HTMX, just put those down there as well. In the meantime, of course, if you want to catch up on all the cool Pro Next.js stuff that I'm doing, be sure to go to pronextjs.dev and sign up. On this video, you can hit that like button if you really like it, and you can hit that subscribe button if you really, really like it. In the meantime, hit that bell and be notified the next time one of these blue collar coders comes out.